Yeah, hello, I am uh, Nicolas. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can hear you very well. Nicolas. Fine. So Nicolas Pio from uh, engineering company EGE in uh, Montpellier, and I will present you basically what we have done for the for the guide uh, to to write these guidelines. Uh, so as Andre said, the guide is now available. Sorry, only in French at this stage uh, to download for everybody. It's free. Um, so, um, in the guide, we first have an overview of the subject designed for principals and architects. So, we try to be not too technical for them to understand the big principles and uh, to understand what the subject is, because it's actually a lot about architecture and bioclimatism before even going to the ventilated side. Uh, then we remind a few definitions, like what is mechanical, natural, hybrid ventilative cooling on the mixed systems. Uh, as Andres explained, we define the concept we use to uh, assess uh, efficiency like thermal uh, potential, uh, what is the energy evacuation, uh, what is the EA. And then all the building we study gave us a lot of uh, examples, good and bad, to, uh, to see what should be done and to lead the design process in a progressive and logical way. So for us, we should start with the expected requirements. So it's defined by the program, uh, what is the like maximum temperature of uh, uncomfort and the number of hours we allow above this temperature. And if it's not defined, we should define it with the client. Uh, then we move to the site analysis, because the site, we can't do anything about it. It's where we are. So we look at the acoustic of the site. We have problems with acoustic with neighbors or with outside noise coming in. Uh, do we have air quality problems? What is the thermal potential that this site can, can offer? Uh, once we have done all that, we can move into the building. So the building analysis is mostly with the architect, like how we manage the shading, uh, the thermal mass, uh, the way we put insulation outside, inside, depending on the occupancy scenario. Uh, what will be the thermal loads? Are they more internal, external? That's Everything Andres explained to you, that's uh, what we look at really in detail. And also we looked at small details that can be a problem like uh, fire safety, as uh, Anne-Marie showed you on the, um, on the building where the doors were closed, so you need to look at that. And the intrusion problem, if you want to open windows, you need to make sure that there is no burglar coming in. Once you've done all these kind of web of constraints and opportunities and possibilities of your building on your site, you can go to choosing your ventilative cooling system. Uh, and uh, we, in the guide, we explain what are the pro and cons of each system and what you should look at in details. And then we also give examples of design and figures and order of magnitude to help uh, to grasp the, the main concept. So I will Come back on a few of these items. First, the concept. I think everybody knows that pretty, pretty well. In mechanical ventilative cooling, you have either supply or exhaust single flow ventilation or double flow balanced ventilation uh, with heat recovery because nowadays, at least in France, we can't do any more uh, balanced ventilation without heat recovery. Of course, when we do ventilated cooling, we need to bypass the heat recovery exchanger. Otherwise, we will uh, exchange calories we want to get out. Uh, in natural ventilation, you have either cross ventilation, so when you can have a cross airflow, that's where we get the most of the system. If you are single side, it will be much more difficult to achieve good results. The stack effect, uh, of course, to manage to get airflow naturally is quite important. We saw in the crash in the building in Vitor that it didn't work because it didn't have enough stack effect, not enough height. And the hybrid is more or less a natural ventilation, but you have a small fan that could help airflow if the wind or stack effect are not enough to provide enough airflow. And the mixed system are buildings where you can have both mechanical and natural together, like a commercial center where you have um, mechanical ventilation in the premises and you have big atrium in the center with a lot of height where you could use natural ventilation and they could work together quite well. I come back on this uh, graph because I think it's quite important, and uh, you show it briefly with Andres, but it's always good to see it again. So the red line is inside temperature. So what we look inside is uh, the decrease in temperature, of course. And sometimes you can see you always want good de uh, high decrease, but actually the example shows that the good building in Toulouse had a low decrease of only two or three degrees. 
which could seem poor, but it's actually very good because the increase during the day was also only two or three. So they were all summer between 24 and 27 degrees and no in comfort. On the other hand, you can have very high degrees at night, but it's no good if you have higher increase during the day anyway. If you increase by seven degrees during the day, you can decrease five degrees, but it's still not very good. And the potential, as you can see, is the green area here. And it depends a lot how you will use this potential depends on your controls. If you have only hourly control, let's say you, can, you get only the uh, time to uh, do the, the cooling, the ventilative cooling, and the next night you would be here and you will lose all this of potential and all this potential will not be used. And that's where we say that you should really use uh, temperature probes to do your controls, to do intelligent controls. And another um, interesting thing about this graph and that we use to assess the quality is the ratio between inside decrease and outside potential. So you, and that's qualify more or less the efficiency, how you manage to use the potential at the best. Um, in the guide, we don't go too much into the details of natural ventilation because there are some very complete and specialized guides uh, about that by IEVC and others. But we just stress that natural ventilation is quite complex to get good results. You depend on a lot of parameters that are not so easy to handle and to design. As mechanical ventilation, you know everything you do. In natural ventilation, it's, we found it much more difficult to grasp, and the examples were not so conclusive on the buildings, buildings that to be very well designed for it to give good results. So we just give in the guide a few examples, but we, we invite people to go to real guides about the subject. And the same for natural ventilative cooling driving forces, so the stack effect. So we gave all the formula to calculate. The wind pressure we also gave formula and principle. I won't go into that now for the presentation, but just remember that in natural ventilation, you only have few pascal pressure available for the whole system. You, you play with two, three, four pascals. So you have maybe one pascal pressure drop. If you have an insect screen for your inlet on a small opening, you will very get go to two pascal here or three, and you have no airflow into your building. So we just want to stress that natural ventilation needs really accurate sizing and uh, a lot of caution. And so what, what we found is you really need, if you want to size something like engineer uh, ventilative cooling, you, you need to go through a dynamic thermal simulation. This small graph that Andres showed at the beginning is very good to get a, a grasp, a first overview of what you can get or not, and if it's the way to go, maybe, but it won't be enough to size it. So to do your dynamic thermal simulation, you first, again, it will be the same, uh, practically the same process. You start from your program, okay, what is the number of hours I allow of discomfort, and what is the level? Is it 27 degrees? Is it 28? And in here, again, we highly recommend to get to 28 if the client is okay, because 27 will really increase a lot the number of air change hours you will need. Um, so 28 is much more manageable, at least in uh, Mediterranean climate. Again, depend the kind of climate. In continental climate, could be very different, as you have seen. In Macon, one air change hour is enough to get good results. And then you will model the type of fromage, what is the occupancy scenario, is it occupied during the day like build an office building or during the night like a bedroom, and all your internal loads. The site will give you basically the thermal potential, which is the main thing, but also you could have natural shading and uh, things like that that could be good, like in any dynam dynamic thermal simulation. And then you go into your building. So you look at external loads, solar shading, that's really the most important solar shading. Look at internal loads, uh, ventilation, infiltration, thermal inertia, as we explained, where do you put your insulation? Uh, thermal inertia, you always need it, but you, do you want it inside, which is good for offices? Uh, so you will delay the time of the peak of temperature, or maybe it's better to have insulation inside in the bedroom because you will very quickly decrease the temperature at night. So you run all that in your software, and basically you just want one result at the end. It's how much air change rate do I need to achieve the program requirements? So it's an iterative process. You start, you put three air change hours. You see, oh, I still have 200 like we did in the building in Toulouse. 
Uh, first, you do nothing. You have 700 hours uh, and compost. You try 300 hours. You still have 250 uh, hours in compost. That's not enough. Then you try five, maybe six at some hour, and when you are within the good boundaries, you say, okay, that's what I need. Then you have all the all the data you need to start your design. So you need basically what you need is to do a system that will achieve the at hour you have calculated. So maybe natural ventilative cooling can do the trick. Uh, it's very good because you have no electrical consumption, but as I stressed before, you really need to take care to energy evacuation. Uh, mainly in uh, Mediterranean climate where you don't have much potential to play with. So it's really critical to manage it to, to, uh, to be a success. And we found that in natural ventilative cooling, you have much more design parameters to deal with. Uh, mechanical ventilation, well, you have a better control, better, you manage better the airflow. If you need six air change an hour, you know how to achieve six air change an hour and you will have it every night. So what you need to look at is really auxiliary equipment consumption and uh, EER. Uh, because if your EER is no better than four, uh, you should really ask yourself, is it not better to put air conditioning? Where at night it could work at EER of five, um, even maybe six when it's 20 degrees C outside. So EER needs to be optimized. Uh, and if you need a lot of filters up, if you can't optimize the air, maybe uh, ventilative cooling is not the solution for your building because of all the constraints you have. You need to be um, aware of acoustic, of course. And the problem in mechanical systems is the balancing because we can't use self-regulating dumpers anymore. Uh, we can't manage double different airflows without a lot of motorized dumpers. And the duct sizing will be much bigger. You need to talk with that with the architect. They are usually not very keen to uh, increase the the size in the full stadium. Uh, so the prevent guide really go to each of these and look at all the pro and con uh, arguments, uh, all the constraints to be checked, and uh, all the critical points to be studied in detail for each system. Uh, I just quickly come back on the EER that can be used also to uh, adjust the control settings. So the ER, you can first calculate the thermal evacuation with this formula. Uh, I won't come back on that. I, I guess you know it. So that will give you the, the cold kilowatt you can get during the night. Then you calculate the uh, electrical consumption. So that specific fan power of your system by your flow rate. And when you calculate all that, you find that actually EER is direct, directly related to the delta T between inside and outside. So if you have, let's say, a SFP of uh, a bit less than one watt per liter per second, and you want the EER no less than four, because if it's less than four, let's do air conditioning and not natural ventilative cooling. Then you should not start ventilative cooling before you have three degrees difference between inside and outside, which stresses the fact that your temperature probes need to be very accurate because if they are not on the right place and they don't get accurate measurements, even if they are not accurate, they don't give the same measurements at the same temperature, if you have one degree difference between your two probes, you will either lose potential where you could ventilate but you won't start because your probes say not, or you will start too early and uh, be under counterproductive. So that's uh, basically three degrees is a good, uh, a good point to start with, to start with the uh, ventilative cooling. Uh, and then we show a few design examples. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but school educational buildings are really good for ventilative cooling because um, the ventilative flow rate you need during the day for occupancy is already quite high. These are like meeting rooms. These rooms are uh, with a lot of occupancy, so you need a lot of air flow rate anyway during the day. So at night, sometimes you don't need to add much to have uh, the, the air flow rate needed for ventilative quick. So these are really good buildings. Sometimes you just have to run the fan at night and that's done. And then the work could be to try to limit the air by uh, trying to do a bit of uh, having only one fan working instead of the, the, the balanced fan. So you will divide by two the electrical consumption. Uh, if we go into office buildings, uh, this example is a balanced 
flow system. So you have uh, a speed airflow of four meters per second for acoustic reason during occupancy. And what could be done is completely bypass the herming unit at night, put another fan, so you will have much less consumption uh, of all the system. Also, you could, because you need higher airflow, but you have only your system that was designed. This example is for a system that was already designed and you come after, so too late. But trying to do something, you could say, okay, there is nobody at night, I could increase my uh, speed at eight meters per second. So not so good for the ER, but at least you get some results and uh, manage with some openings. So you really manage to multiply the airflow by four and maybe achieve some good results. Uh, another uh, example here is you have your herming unit uh, designed for uh, hygienic ventilation. And not to oversize that because you have not so much uh, room in your plant room. And also it's quite expensive to oversize that for the, like let's say this one does one at change an hour and you need six at change an hour. You don't want to design your hair and you need for six at change an hour. So you just add fans, let's say five at change an hour that will supplement the flow that you need at night for the ventilative cooling. Then you just need a few motorized dampers to adjust the flow when you need it. And of course, when you do ventilative cooling, you stop the, recuper the heat exchange. And this uh, other example is also uh, office building. So this one is single flow. So during hygienic mode uh, aeration, you just run with a small fan designed for the small uh, hygienic airflow required. Because we found that sometimes, let's say here you are less than one, like 0 0.5 air change an hour. And during night, you need five at change an hour, that's 10 times more. And there is no fan that can move just with a variable speed from one to 10. So better to put another fan that will be designed for the uh, ventilative cooling airflow. And so during the day, you, do, you could have your small flow, but the problem is you can't have your um, self-regulating dampers because otherwise you won't get 10 times the airflow at night. So you need to do the balancing with the inlets. You put all your building at minus 20 pascal, which is basically what is designed for these uh, dampers, and that will manage the hygienic airflow that you want minimum in winter, and then you open the window at night in summer and you get the maximum airflow. And this is for a house where we thought that the house was not good because the, the airflow we had was 200 cubic meters for the whole house, and this is what you need for only one room. So this system is a purely mechanical system that will open on a pressure, like you have normally a 20, minus 20 pascal pressure during the day for the hygienic airflow. And at night for ventilative cooling, you have another system that will extract more, create a higher depression, like let's say minus 40 or minus, yeah, minus 40 pascal. And this system will automatically open and provide you 150 cubic meter an hour per room, which is enough for, uh, for a bedroom. So the, uh, yeah, it's quite late. I will go quickly through the feedback we get. So way it works is building with good results at good upstream program design, commissioning with extended monitoring, and rising of the user awareness. That's what we showed before. And the good example was the building in Toulouse, where everything was dealt with perfectly, and they got very good results. Uh, you need to avoid occupant discomfort, otherwise they don't use the system. That's what we saw in balance. Uh, if people get cold in the morning, they don't open the window at night and they don't discharge the building at night. And you need to take care, that's what Mary uh, said before, if your ventilative cooling is just to save on uh, air conditioning energy, then it's no more about comfort but about energy saving. You want to make sure you don't make unwanted moisture uh, coming in early in the morning by uh, making, so you should stop your ventilative cooling on a base on enthalpy comfort. So you don't make unwanted moisture that then the air conditioning system will have to deal with later in the day. So commissioning again, uh, and mostly commissioning of the controls because nobody is there at night when the system works. So if you, if you don't have supervision like a building management system that allow you to see some graph and come back later to see how it works, sometimes systems system do not work and nobody knows about it. 
So really important to have a very thorough commissioning. Uh, I talk about the calibration of uh, temperature probes, uh, which is also a problem we have seen like in the building in Toulouse, uh, where the probes were not in the right place at the beginning and the results were not good. And also multi-zone regulation, we found again in Toulouse, it, uh, it took them quite a while to get good results for both uh, ground floor on the first floor. Either the ground floor was fine, but the first floor was still too hot in the morning, or if the first floor was fine, then the ground floor was too cold in the morning. So multi-zone regulation is to consider maybe in some buildings. You need to think, like for any project for, about management, uh, good operating manual for the users and the owner. Uh, not too much motorized damper. Try to limit this because one day they will be uh, down and you need to change them. So you need to think how you will change them. It needs to be easy. And the less you have, the better it is. Provide air transfer. Uh, so manual, manual system proved to be not the best because occupant norm don't know how to use them very well. And uh, they can pose problem at night. If you open your window and during the night there is a big storm with uh, rain and wind that will blow all your papers, that's not uh, ideal. And air transfer grills that you need to put if people close their doors, you need air transfer grills for the system to work and maybe they will cause you problems of acoustic. Um, we saw a lot of underfacing, both in natural ventilation system, uh, sometimes uh, like in the building in vitrol, and also uh, in mechanical systems that are not designed initially for uh, ventilative cooling. So um, you need to be to be sure of your sizing. And last, you don't want to. Uh, to lesser the building thermal performance by putting more air inlets that are not very airtight, or by creating new thermal bridges that wouldn't exist without the natural ventilative system or the ventilative cooling system. So, yeah, uh, there's a big uh, focus now on uh, building thermal performance, and don't, you don't want to, uh, to decrease that. And where we are at today, uh, actually, it's the beginning, I think. We, we don't have yet a lot of system designed for ventilative cooling. We don't have uh, module, control modules with an easy uh, program with just few parameters to set up that will work well. We still need to have a uh, system that we will completely program, and we still need to play with it, to tinker with it. It's not so easy yet. And the main difficulty is to have a double airflow rate, uh, to manage a double, double airflow rate and to change that easily without many motorized numbers. So we don't have yet a solution, but I'm sure it will come someday. And we found some way around at this stage. So thank you, and uh, I'm ready to answer any question or maybe some question we haven't answered yet from uh, Anne-Marie and Andres.